Hi, I'm the Casual Spaceman and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to debunk the top five moon hoax theories. Then at number one, I'm going to give you the smoking gun that's going to prove once and for all that NASA could not have faked the moon landings. Engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. And there it is, the Saturn V, the most powerful rocket ever built, lifting off from Cape Canaveral on the 16th of July 1969, carrying the Apollo 11 spacecraft containing Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins. A few days later, the lunar module landed Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the surface where Neil Armstrong took the very first steps of a human being on the surface of the moon. What an historic day that was. But problem is, many people think that the moon landings were staged. I'm gonna give you the top five reasons why people think that the moon landings were staged. And then at number one, I'm gonna give you the smoking gun that's gonna prove once and for all that the moon landings could not have been staged. Number five. There were no stars in any of the photos or the videos. Well, this is a classic reason, isn't it? And it's been debunked many, many times, but we should go over it again because clearly people don't understand. And all you need to do is have just even a very basic rudimentary understanding of how cameras work. The reason why you can't see stars in any of the videos or any of the photographs of the moon is for the very simple reason that the camera cannot pick up the stars. The cameras are set in order to pick up images of Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong on the surface of the moon. The surface of the moon is highly reflective of sunlight and that's what it was. That's what they were set up to do. If they were set the other way around to pick up smaller pins of light, the stars, what would happen is that the, uh, any of the image on the surface of the moon would be completely washed out and completely overexposed and it would just be a mess. That's the most simple reason. I think most people have a basic that basic understanding but it seems to me that the deniers don't. Number four. The famous footprint in the dust of the moon does not match the boot of Buzz Aldrin's spacesuit. Also, it is impossible to make detailed footprints because there is no moisture on the moon to hold the moon dust particles together to create such detail. Well, this is one of the iconic images of the moon landings. Buzz Aldrin's um, footprint. Most people think, a lot of people think that it's actually Neil Armstrong's uh, uh, print, but it's actually not, it was Buzz Aldrin. He took the photograph to demonstrate the structure of the dust on the moon. As you can see in this next image, on the top left hand, hand corner, that is a moon dust particle. As you can see, it's very uneven and jagged. In the top right hand corner, you'll see an image of some sand particles. As you will see, they're smooth and round um, and weathered. The dust particle from the moon is jagged and what that does that enables the dust particles to cling together in order to actually create that kind of detail. Very similar to flour. If you have a, a pile of flour you can easily make some very detailed footprints because the structure of flour is very very similar. It's very uneven and jagged and it will hold its shape. And it's right because what people are doing is that people are actually uh, comparing it to dry sand. Um, on the surface of the earth and if they're and they're absolutely right the best you can hope for as it shows in this image is a bit of form but very very little detail because exactly what I've shown you in the image of the of the sand particle the particles are very round and smooth and weathered and they will not hold their shape and they will not cling together to create detail of that level the other problem that they have with the uh, footprint as well is the footprint they claim does not match the spacesuit foot of Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin. Well, they're absolutely right, it doesn't. But what they fail to understand and what they fail to know is that they didn't actually walk on the moon just in their spacesuit. They actually put on some overboots to protect the boots from getting holes in it. If they, if they get holes in the, in the spacesuit, that's really dangerous for them in the vacuum of space. 
So as we can see from this and next image, this is the overboot. And if you can see, it matches the print in the dust of the moon. And as you can see from this other image as well, you can see uh, that's probably Buzz Aldrin, I'm not sure, or Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, I think, coming down from the uh, lunar module's ladder, and it clearly shows the pattern of the overboot. Number three. The flag is waving in the photos and the videos. There is no atmosphere on the moon, so there is no wind. Well, this is one of the oldest ones, um, but it's probably one of the easiest, simplest to debunk. If you look at this um, iconic image of Neil Armstrong standing next to the United States flag, you can clearly see, first of all, that the way the structure of the flag and the flagpole um, is made. You can see from the straight line at the top, the um, flag is stitched onto um, a cross pole, which is then attached at a right angle to the main pole, which is stuck into the uh, dust or rock of the, um, of the moon. Um, basically, the flag is not waving. It's not waving at all. Simply what happened was the uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin um, ruffled, ruffled the flag in such a way that it appears that it's waving but it just simply isn't there's also a video image which I'm not going to show here of the flag supposed to be moving just after Neil Armstrong let go of it was simply put all it was it was moving when he was moving it around as he positioned it he let go it bounced a couple of times and then stopped so no the flag is not moving it's as simple as that number two the Valanen belt. The Apollo astronauts could not have survived their radiation when going through the Valanen belts. For those of you that don't know, the Valanen radiation belts are zones of um, energized charged particles, most of which originate from the solar wind, that are captured and held around the planet by the Earth's magnetic field. So how did the Apollo astronauts get through the Valanen belt? Well, I'm going to let Seeker explain it. Links to the full video and Seeker's channel in the description below. It was up to NASA to build a spacecraft with a strong radiation barrier and figure out a flight trajectory that avoided the thickest, most radioactive parts of the belt while traveling as fast as possible. Scientists determined that if the speed of the Apollo spacecraft was about 25,000 kilometers per hour, it would take about 52.8 minutes to pass through the belts. Based on that information, they found that the radiation dose received during that amount of time would be, at most, 11.4 rads, and that's without the protection of a spacecraft. And since a lethal radiation dose for a human is 300 rads in one hour, NASA deemed the missions a go. In the end, the average radiation dose on the skin of the Apollo astronauts came out to be 0.38 rad which is about the same radiation you'd receive getting two CT scans on your head. So while the Van Allen belts are lethal, they could really only kill an astronaut if they were to spend several days in their radioactive vicinity. And despite the challenges the belts create when leaving Earth, we should actually be thanking them for protecting life on our planet from utter annihilation. Well, that's just four so far um, of some of the reasons why people think the moon landings were hoaxed or faked. But there's, this is number one. And for me, this is the smoking gun. The smoking gun that proves once and for all that NASA could not have faked the moon landings. And the number one reason is that NASA or anybody did not have the technology to fake the moon landings at all. They did not have the, the technology to fake the television pictures that we saw or even the photographs. They didn't have the technology of the cameras and the studio effects and what have you as well. Moon hoaxes will lead you to believe that Stanley Kubrick, the filmmaker himself, staged everything. Well, it was impossible because he did not have the technology. First of all, look at Stanley Kubrick's film, um, The Space Odyssey, and look at the weather when the, when the men were walking on the moon. It looked awful. It really did, and that's, that was at the time, that was Stanley Kubrick's best work. But don't take my word for it. Take the word of a real, genuine filmmaker, and he will explain much better than I can how it was impossible to fake the moon landings. 
This is why the moon hoax uh, would have been impossible. Take one. Did people go to the moon in 1969? I'm not totally sure. I wasn't on the moon then. Did they fake going to the moon? No, I'm pretty sure they didn't because they couldn't. Why are people missing this? I think maybe they forget how primitive video was in 1969. I mean, it was an amazing achievement in electronics, but there was a lot they couldn't do. Uh, let me try to explain that. The pivotal claim for the Apollo hoax theory, without which it all falls apart, is that what we saw on TV was slow motion footage of astronauts running around in a film studio. Because if it wasn't slow motion, it couldn't have happened on Earth, right? Let's talk about how slow motion works in film and video. There are two ways to make motion slow. One is you shoot it at normal speed and play it back slow. The other is you shoot it fast and play it back normal. The second way is called overcranking. It looks smoother and more realistic because you're sampling natural motion at a higher frame rate. But that means we would have had to shoot it on film using high-speed film cameras, right? Why? Uh, because in 1969 there were no high-speed video cameras. Keep in mind that when people today watch documentaries about the Apollo missions, they're looking at the highlights. They're looking at, you know, short clips cut together. And short clips are much easier to fake. But in July 1969, 600 million people, including me, were all staring at a continuous lunar telecast that went on for a long time. It's actually pretty boring sometimes. Um, at 16 minutes into the EVA, they turn on the video camera. Four minutes later, you get your one small step thing. Then Aldrin climbs out, and they move the camera onto a tripod and proceed to do all their moon walking, flag planting, photo snapping, and rock picking. Then Armstrong climbs back up into the lander, and it's over. Um, by which time the video camera has been running for 143 minutes. So if we're faking this with electronic slow-mo at one-third speed, we only need to record about 47 minutes of continuous live-action video. Well, that's a lot more than that Ampex disc recorder could hold. But NASA is special. Maybe they have a big disc recorder, right, in 1969. Okay, how much bigger? 95 times bigger? I don't know, man. I mean, government agencies are powerful, but they're not God. Then again, they are NASA. Maybe they did have some special way to overcrank video uh, in 1969 for an hour and a half. Maybe they had some top secret high-speed electronics that the rest of the world never knew about. Oh, wait a minute. No, you guys said that uh, their navigation computers were too slow. <clears throat> I guess we can't have it both ways. I mean, it can't be fast and slow at the same time, right? Wouldn't it be easier to shoot this on film? I mean, in 1969, we already knew how to overcrank film. Um, for Apollo 11, we only need to shoot 30 FPS and play it back at 10. Okay, let's try that. I'd recommend you shoot on 35 millimeter to minimize the film grain. That's what Kubrick would have done. Now let's see, normal 35 millimeter runs at 90 feet per minute, but since we're shooting at 30 FPS, that'll be 112 and a half feet per minute. We need uh, 47 minutes of original film, so that's about 5,300 feet. And of course, there's no such thing as a film magazine that big. Volkswagen? But if you shoot 1,000 foot loads, that's about that big, then you can do it in five mags. Um, oh wait, I can do this. You don't want to see the splice marks where you put the reels together, because then everybody would know it was a fake. And remember, we're shooting for TV, so it's 133 aspect ratio and not 185. So, that means you have to do A and B rolls. You have to cut the negative into A and B rolls and print them onto a 5300 foot fine-grained interpositive, then cut an answer print in the film lab. And when you're done, make sure everybody that works in the film lab dies mysteriously in a car crash. Now, now you just need to find a custom-designed telecine that can transfer your 5,300-foot answer print to video at 10 frames per second. Pin registered, of course. How hard can that be? Of course, you need to be absolutely certain that in all that splicing and printing and transferring, uh, none of the most common 
film artifacts have gotten onto your giant print. No base scratches, no emulsion flakes, no gate weave, no grain, and not one single fleck of dust. Because any one of those things will instantly betray that this is a hoax. Okay, so you do that, and then you do it again for five more lunar missions. Only those later missions, you have to play back at 30 FPS, meaning you have to shoot at like 60 FPS, twice the torque, twice as many splices to keep clean, uh, twice as much of a chance that the film's going to break in the camera. You think maybe it would be easier to just go to the moon? Hmm, I don't really know if that's possible. Like I said, I wasn't on the moon in 1969, and neither were you. I can tell you that in 1969 it was not possible technically to fake what we saw on TV. Well there it is, straight from the horse's mouth, straight from a film director, a filmmaker himself, who says it was impossible and details much better than I can as to why it was impossible that NASA or anyone could actually fake the pictures that we saw of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walking on the surface of the moon. I've only shown you five, there are many, many more, and they've all been busted, they've all been debunked, every single one of them. So for me, if flat earthers or moon hoaxes cannot prove that the moon landings were a hoax, then the moon must exist, which goes against the grain of flat earthers, because the moon doesn't exist, it's apparently it's an object that within our, it's in our sky, within our atmosphere, and inside this firmament, and this dome, ridiculous. If that proves the moon landings were not faked, then it proves the moon exists. If the moon exists, then space must exist. And if space exists, then gravity must exist. But as we all know, flat earthers rely on the fact that they have, they think they have to debunk gravity because gravity does not work on the flat earth. They know this. So if you like my video, please give it a like below. And if you like the content that I'm producing so far, please subscribe. It really helped my my, my, uh, my channel to grow, and I would really, really appreciate it. I've also got a Patreon account. Um, if you can donate any amount every single month, this will actually hope this will actually help me to improve my videos, make them much better quality. I'm going to reinvest all the money that comes from that back into this into this project, into this channel, and just to make it better and better for you. So it only leaves to me to say thank you again for viewing my channel and once again, science is truth. Oh, another video done. Oh, Mr. Brinstein, fantastic. Is it, is, it, is it what we agreed? Oh, fantastic. I can buy those subscribers now.